Good heavens, boy. What are you doing out here all alone? You lost or something? Where are your parents? You want a ride? Huh? You don't like to talk much, do you? You hungry, son? Let's get a few things straight here, boy. Now, you're not moving in here permanent. As soon as I can figure out what to do with you, we're gonna... Now, one thing I don't hold to around here is stealing. Now, if you want something, you ask for it. You got that straight? But if you're hungry, eat. There's no free ride around here. You're going to be working for your breakfast. I hope you like horses, because that's where you're going to be sleeping. I fixed you a place in the barn loft. more than a bargain for with you. Now, if you're so anxious to help, get over there and give them horses some hay. not too fond of strangers. Not fond of anybody. <sighs> He's never been broke. Go hunt up some breakfast.
Let's go eat breakfast before it gets cold. Future, John. Made it over here in 20 minutes. I know that's eight miles in less than a half an hour. A man can make a fortune selling these things. Uh, I think I'll stick to horses. They smell better. I just came by to tell you my mare's ready. Thought I'd bring her by tomorrow. That's fine with me. Where'd he come from? Oh, I found him lost the other day. Bet he's a lot of help. I think you'd be surprised. Got away with horses. Yeah, well, if you wake up tomorrow and find all your valuables gone, don't say I didn't warn you. The last bunch I hired got drunk, broke in the house, and stole all the food we had. Scared Marcy out of her wits. Well, knowing you, you probably didn't pay them enough to eat on. Yeah, all. well, they always got enough to get drunk on. These savages. Knocking her down like that. Her being with child and all. Yeah, I see your point. Well, I hope to be rid of him in a day or two. I did catch him trying to pack off a brick of cheese. You know, you're never gonna break that thing. Suppose I take him off your hands, I'll give you $150 for him. You kind of liked his last cold, huh? Oh, well, it was all right. No, I think I'm gonna keep him. What time are you coming by tomorrow? Oh, midday. You think you'll be calmed down by then? Well, if you leave that mechanical monster behind, I'm sure he'll be just fine. Hey! You better run, you little renegade. You touch my automobile again. He didn't mean any harm, Bill. He's just curious. Damn it. What are you laughing at? Nothing. Uh. Nothing at all. is it now? What in the world are you doing in here? No, I... Get out of here. No, I don't want it. distance with that thing now. <laughs> well, the next time you see a skunk after chickens, let him eat them. Get him out of the stall. You stand back. Because he's pretty calm now, but he's very unpredictable. Easy now. Easy now. Easy, boy. Ah, 
Here we go. It's a God-given gift of some kind. Hand me that bottle. <clears throat> I really owe you, boy. Anything you want, anything at all, just ask. teaching you something about horses. Because with a little learning, you could be a good trainer yourself. I will take the horse. <coughs> you speak English? I will take the horse. Is that all you can say? The red horse. I take him. You talking about my stallion? <laughs> I'm sorry, son. I can't do that. I'm a breeder. I make half my living off that stallion. You said you'll give me anything I want. Well, sure, anything within reason. Well, you know what I meant. Some clothes or sleeping in the house or something. You promise. Well, I wasn't talking about my stallion. He's a killer anyway. If there's any other horse, maybe I'd think about it. You keep him here. I stay. You teach me about the horses. No, you just think about something else. Well, I don't even know your name yet. And you expect me to give you my top stallion, huh? My name is Nuthash Turashiniki. Now can I have the horse? No. I'm just starting to like you. Nut Nuthatch. Is that what you said? How in the world did you ever get saddled with a name like that? My parents named us after the birds. Well, they must have run out of the better bird names before they got to you. Big Femi, can I have the horse? No, no, no. I ain't going to give that horse to you or anybody. And I ain't going to call you Nuthatch, either. Sake. How about Willie? I liked it better when you wouldn't talk. Miwok? I never heard of such a band. 
It's the strangest story I ever heard, you falling off a train like that. How come nobody came back for you? It was night. Everyone was sleeping. Hey, Bill. Been expecting you. How are you, Mary? Fine, thank you. What the devil happened to you? Oh, that stallion got a little frisky. Thanks to the boy here, I'm able to tell about it. Frank, take these folks' horses, put them around there in the shade. Still haven't got rid of that Indian kid, huh? Look, Daddy, he's wearing a dress. He had a run-in with a skunk. Look, I want you to stay away from that kid, you hear me? How come? You just do what I tell you. Where do you want me to put her? Put her right in here. Where's the stallion? Oh, I'm sure he'll show up for the event. Let's let him tease her a while, make sure she's in heat. or something. Come on. You sure don't like to talk much. Hey, how do you get up there? Come on, let's go. Well, are you coming? Marcy doing any better? Uh, she's still flat on her back. Dr. Minsky says she'll probably have to stay that way till the baby comes. You gonna get your boy this time? I sure hope so. Doc says this may have to be our last. I'll give you $300 for him, John. $300? That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Why would anyone want to pay that kind of money for a horse? Well, with proper training, uh, I might be able to make a runner out of it. Well, you already got the fastest horse around. Besides, you can't run him if you can't break him. Right, that's my problem. Well, I'll think about it. Well, don't think too long. No, I want to do it. Well, I guess I better be going. Mary? Now, where's that girl gone to? Ah! Mary? Hey, don't you know girls are supposed to go first? Or maybe you are a girl. She's playing with that Indian. What's the fuss, Bill? Hey, let me see what's under that set. <laughs> Mary? Ah! Mary? Oh, they're just kids. and I find you wrestling with him like you were some kind of a half-naked savage. All right, son. I hope he hurt you good. Maybe that'll teach you not to mix with his kind. Where are your boots? Left them in the barn. Frank, if 
Phil Stinslow has any future dealing to do with that stallion, he's going to have to deal with you. Because he's yours. Louise, have you got any of these in any smaller sizes? Well, I've got a few of the denim breeches, but these are the last of the bunch on sale. Well, I don't know. Can't lay out too much on him. I'll take these and, and the shirts. They'll shrink some, won't they? Well, I, I could take them in a place or two. Why don't you come on over for Sunday supper and I'll do it then. Well, that's mighty nice of you. But I think they'll be just fine. For now, anyway. I'll uh, put it on your bill, John. No, thank you. I've got the cash. I know you got that mortgage payment coming due this month. That's all been taken care of, John. I'll just put it on your account. Well, did you come into some big inheritance or something, Louise? That was no small sum, as I recollect. The mortgage. It's all been taken care of, John. Well, I guess if you need heat, you have to sit by the stove. Mind you, don't get burnt. Respect a horse, Frank. You never know what he'll be thinking. I had a horse once tame as a kitten for eight years. One day I got on him, he spun me around, threw me down on the ground, and tried to dance on the face. A couple minutes later, calm as could be. Never buck since. All right, now, the first thing I'm going to have you do is jip him on the line. What is jip? That's where you let him exercise himself. At the end of this rope, you get off there in the middle, let him go around circles, and you snap this whip, just like I showed you. Whoop. Whoop. All right, you ready? Okay, Frank, you've got him. Give it a try. Talk to him. He'll listen. Y'all taken care of? Yeah. She's over there in that last stall. I think that's safe. He knows what he's doing. Pick up the pace a little. Never seen anything like it. Boys are natural. 
you had a chance to think on my offer? What? The static. $300. I brought it with me. Sorry, I can't, Bill. What do you mean you can't? Well, I'm not the only one involved here. $400. What do you mean you're not the only one involved? $500. I get it. You won't sell him to me for $500, but you'll give him to that wahoo for nothing. Bill, the boy saved my life. Here's your stud thing. What I said. Lightning, thunder, and fury. Fury. Maybe I'll call him Fury. What do you think, John? Your horse. You are the red fury. about sums it up for both of you, doesn't it? He is smart. Smart aleck, you mean? Give me that blanket. John, try this one. You trying to tell me a horse knows the difference between blankets? He likes this one. Frank's blanket. Well, we'll just see about that. Well, I'll be. That beats anything I've ever seen. You don't. Oh, you got your blanket on him. Riding him is a whole nother thing. Oh. Go get him, put him in the barn.
won that horse with love and care, Frank. But remember that. He'll do anything for you. Because horses need love just like people. My father, he has sheep. But not so many. I think you miss your family, don't you? Sometimes when it is night. Yeah. This is my family, Frank. Jenny, my little boy Ryan. He was two. The flu took him. Short time. Whoa. Hello, Mr. Whoa. Handley. Frank, take these horses over to the barn, will you? Those are fine looking animals. Thanks. What can I do for you? I'm Amelia Anderson. I'd like to have a few words with you, if I may. Sure. With me? Yes. Sure. Come right on in. Thank you. You're from the East, aren't you? Philadelphia, actually. How are you liking it out here? Oh, I must say, this country does grow on you. Go right on in. All right. On second thought, we can sit out here. That would be fine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Handley, I'm here to extend a special invitation for the boy to join us at our school. Oh, now, Miss Anderson, wait a minute. Now, the boy's only here temporarily. Yes, I know. I've spoken to Sheriff Lamb. The point is, until his parents are found, he's got to fill his mind with something. Might as well be science and writing and arithmetic. Well, that seems like a whole lot of trouble for nothing to me. Besides, I don't know whether or not he'd fit in. You mean because he's an Indian? I don't like it or not, Miss Anderson. He's kind of not very well thought of around here. Well, I think it's about time we changed all that, don't you, Mr. Handley? Well, that would take a lot of change. I think you just might be stirring up a hornet's nest. Over a young boy going to school? I tell you what, Mr. Handley, you let him come to school for one week. And if it doesn't work out, then we can at least say we made an effort. Well, if that's what he wants to do. You want to go to school? I think maybe I would like to learn. Good. Then it's settled. Young man, I will expect to see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock sharp. All right? Well, I have to go now. Goodbye, Mr. Handley. All right. Just do the best you can do. That's all anybody can ask. I'm gonna leave your horse at that livery stable, right across the way. You can ride him home. Morning, Louise. Miss Anderson. Good morning. My, those britches do suit him, John. He's a fine-looking boy. Welcome to school, Frank. We need to make this official. We've got to put your full name here in my book. So that's Frank. Nuthatch. Nuthatch? Toad. Uh, Chinaki. Toad at Chinaki. That's a very nice name. Nuthatch? <laughs> 
Yeah. Some folks name their kids after presidents, others after birds. I think I would like to call you Frankie, if that's all right with you. Think he's sitting in school with my Mary? He's enrolled, if that's what you mean. Well, unenrolling. Why would I want to do that, Mr. Stensler? Be serious. You can't expect him to keep up with white kids. He'd just be holding everybody back. You don't hardly even speak American. Well, if I were to limit my enrollment based on a student's lack of fluency in English, no one would be eligible including you. Me and my folks have worked too hard to build this country into a place where decent, God-fearing folks can raise their kids in peace. I sure ain't gonna... Excuse me. Uh, children, would you all please take Frankie and show him around our playground? Go on. I ain't gonna stand around while some do-good Easterner backs us up a hundred years. The next thing you know, she'll be marrying them off to our kids and filling the place with little half-breeds. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Now, until you can show me some legal reason why I should remove him, Frankie is going to stay in my class, and I am going to teach him. I may be new to the Wild West, but I have faced worse bullies than you on the streets of Philadelphia, and I'm not the least bit intimidated. You're forgetting your place, Miss Anderson. I happen to be on the school board. How do you think you got this job? You're not the only one on the school board, Bill. He's right. You can't just order us around. This is a community matter. Fine. Then we'll just bring it to a vote Thursday night when we meet. And don't worry, I'll get all the votes I need. Either that or I'll start calling in the favors people owe me. You might as well start packing, lady. You're as much as out of a job. got to make sure he's broken right. We all had to do it, right? Right. 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 Go on, Homer. I dare you. My daddy was right. You are a dirty Indian. Homer, I want to see you at that board meeting on Thursday night. Oh, 
Jerry, what are you doing in there? Come here. Come here. He tried to drown me, Pa. He tried to drown me. Uh huh. Where he beat the fair and square. Appears to me you boys doing the ganging on him. No, sir. Let's get you out of those clothes. What happened, Frank? Me and Homer were teasing him first. What are you doing, apologizing? Frankie, where are you going? Mary, you come back here. Frankie, wait. Hey, where are you going with my boy's horse? What the devil? Mary, you come back here. That girl's hurt John Handley. I'm holding you responsible. Sorry, I am for what happened. I'm going home. Indians do not mix with your people. And after all, Mr. Hanley's done for you. You must know Miss Anderson likes you. And I'm starting to like you. That's at least three white folks. Only takes one bad one to make trouble. Like your father. I'm going home now. How can you go home? You don't even know where it is. And what you gonna eat out there on the desert? You think Indians are stupid. I don't think you're stupid. I just think you're stubborn. You would run off without even giving your horse a chance to run in the 4th of July race. You think Fury can win? I don't think I've ever seen a horse as fast as yours. All he needs is a little training. <laughs> It's the biggest race in the area. You could really make a name for yourself. Besides, wouldn't hurt for someone besides my daddy to win that race, would it? Maybe I will stay, but I will not go back to school. School's not a good place. No one's forcing you, but if you did, you'd at least have one friend. I want a promise that this won't happen again and that those involved will make a greater effort to get along. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. That's better. I'm going to give you a 15-minute recess, and I want you all to answer the bell. No lollygagging. All right, go ahead and play. And play nice. 
say how sorry I am for the way some people treated you yesterday. It was unkind and it was unfair. It's too bad there are people that like to stir up trouble. Like Hopi. What do you mean? Hopi are worse than coyotes. They're like snakes. Frankie, stop that. Believing that makes you no better than Mr. Stenslow with his prejudice. Do you know what the word prejudice means? It's when someone doesn't like someone else just because they're different. And sometimes they will do unkind things because they're different. Now, if everyone in the world returned evil for evil, what kind of a world do you think we'd be living in? Would you do me a favor? Would you think about that? Go on outside. I think John likes you. Maybe you can be his woman. Shop wood, make babies. He needs a good woman. Frankie, go play. I just came to make things square with you. Sorry about the fight. Teacher's right. Might as well try to get along. Pa gave me four bits, and I'm gonna buy you anything you want. Maybe we can be blood brothers. Come on. Okay, you want some candy? Now, no pushing. Look him over. Take your pick. Nice one, huh? That what you want? Sure, I can handle that easy. I'll go pay for this stuff. You better get back or Miss Anderson will skin you. Well, Homer, what you got there? Three licorice ropes. Didn't your folks ever teach you not to eat stuff before it's paid for? Sorry, ma'am. Is that all? Yep. Wasn't that Indian boy with you? Oh, no, not with me. to talk to you right away. A very expensive pocket knife was removed from the glass case at the mercantile during recess. Mrs. French informs me that something very valuable was taken from her store during recess. This is a most serious charge, but she's being very nice about it. All she asks is whoever took it to return it. I'm disappointed. All of you who are in the store during recess, stand up right now and empty your pockets onto your desk. Everyone that was in the store,
Where did you get this, Frankie? Homer bought it for me. Hey, don't drag me into it. Is what he says true, Homer? No. All I got was some candy. Ask Miss French. As far as I know, that's correct. I'm going to investigate this further, you two. Now is not the time or place, but I assure you, I will get to the bottom of this. I did not lie. Homer said he would buy it for me. He said he wants to be my friend. Homer's a liar. All right. I'm going to take you at your word. You want to go water the stock? I believe him. So do I. This isn't going to look too good for us at the board meeting, is it? Bill Stenslau is going to have a field day. Maybe we should just pack this thing in. We can't beat Bill at the kind of game he plays. Besides, you could lose your job. You sound like everyone else. I have never seen a town so full of cowards. I'm no coward. I'm just no fool. But don't you ever think about what's right or wrong? Yes, I do. And I'm not so sure that subjecting that boy to that kind of humiliation is so right, either. Oh, running away from the problem is. I'm really disappointed. Boy, from what everyone has told me about you in this town, I thought you had more backbone than that. It's not a matter of backbone. All your principles sound fine coming from a book. And another thing. Maybe you shouldn't be so quick to judge people until you've lived around them longer. Well, how should I judge a man who lives the way you do? Look at this place. There's, there is clutter everywhere. You've got liquor stashed in every nook and cranny. Wife, if your wife could see you like this. You leave Jenny out of this. I'm sure you take better care of your stock than you do yourself. Why, you are a far cry from the man I thought you were. Your wife and son are dead, and you buried yourself with them. Miss Anderson, I think you've overstepped your bounds. Perhaps you're right, Mr. Hanley. motions before us to expel the boy from school. Bill, why don't you present your side of it first? It's not my intention to get into the question of race here. Though, to my mind, it's a legitimate concern. The primary issue is whether or not the association of our children with this Indian boy could have a damaging effect on their character. John Handley, did you not tell me that the first thing this boy did after you showed him the kindness of giving him shelter was to steal from you? Oh, come on, Bill. Well, did he or didn't he? He was hungry. He took some cheese. The next thing you know, I find him trying to steal the radiator cap from my automobile in broad daylight. Is that true, John? Bill, if you're going to stand up there and pick on every little thing that you've ever heard about an Indian, Mary, come up here. On my next trip to John's place, that boy physically attacked my daughter. She's here as evidence. Sheriff, since some of the folks won't be able to see from where they're sitting, would you describe to them what you see on her leg? I do believe it's teeth marks. Oh, that's what you might expect from an animal. But it came from him. All right, your Aunt Lydia will take you home. And then, of course, there was the mud bath incident. 
disrupting a whole day of school, causing our children to wallow like hogs, and then luring off my Mary. Mr. Stenslow, you know as well as I do, Mary went of her own accord. The very fact that one of the sweetest little girls in this valley doesn't see anything wrong with stealing a horse, playing hooky, and then running off all day with a boy into the wilds is just further proof of the kind of influence he has on our children. And finally, Mrs. French, would you please stand? Would you tell these good folks what that boy did the day before yesterday during recess? Why, he, um, he took a knife from the store. Quiet. As far as Miss Anderson goes, it's my strong feeling that any teacher who doesn't place the welfare and character of our children first has no business teaching them. Now, Miss Anderson has asked to speak for herself and the boy. Thank you. Certainly, the boy has gotten himself into some trouble. But is that so unusual for a boy his age? I don't know if Frankie took that knife. I don't think he did. But even if it were true, would it be the first time a youngster has pocketed something shiny from the mercantile? I can't guarantee he'll stay out of trouble any more than any of you parents can say your children will be little angels for the rest of their lives. Mr. Stenslow claims to be four square for progress, civilization, and Christian ethics. Well, if organized hate is progress, I want no part of it. And if Mr. Stenslow can find some scriptural justification for his outrageous ethnic bias, then his Bible is a vastly different edition than mine. I say it is not I, but Mr. Stenslow and his narrow-minded cronies who wish to back this country up right back into the dark ages. Starting with you, Bill. For or against expelling the boy from school? For. Henrietta? For. Well, I'm against the idea. Quiet. Sheriff, your vote? Hell, all this ruckus over an Indian kid who might not even be around long anyway. And if I got a vote, I say keep them on. Two in favor, two opposed. Looks like it's up to you, Louise, to break the tie. Louise, I'm going to have to call for your vote. Well, what is it, Louise? For or against expulsion? Four. Oh. Quiet. Quiet. Quiet, please. Frankie, you understand what's happened? You've been expelled from school. Now, I'm not sure it's fair, but democracies aren't always fair. Now, let's get the rest of it over with. 
All those in favor of dismissing Miss Anderson and getting another school teacher, raise your hand. Opposed? That concludes our business. Meeting adjourned. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, please, may I have your attention for just one more moment? I appreciate your support, but under the circumstances, I will not be able to continue teaching. I will tender my resignation in writing in the morning. Thank you. Miss Anderson, you, you have a contract. You got six weeks left. Frankie, I'm sorry. Amelia? Amelia. Amelia, I'm proud of you for what you said in there. And I only wish that I backed you up more. Well, that's very kind of you to say so. You know, if you don't mind, I'm very tired. Wait a minute. Let me walk you home. Frank, why don't you wait for me in the wagon? Hope you realize that they're going to be pounding on your door in a day or two to start teaching again. Maybe, maybe not. But I hope you're not thinking about heading back east. We need you right here in Grafton. Well, if they want me to teach again, they know my terms. In the meantime, I'm not going to sit idly by doing nothing. What are you aiming to do? Teach Frankie. With your permission, of course. All right. All right. Pay isn't too good. <laughs> Frankie really has such a thirst for knowledge. I don't see any reason why I couldn't have him up to a level three or four in a very short time. I'd like to start tomorrow. Sure. You know, Bill Stinslow didn't know what he was up against when he locked horns with you. Be interesting to see who he comes up with for your replacement. Well, at this late date, he may end up teaching school himself. That'll be the day. Three little ships under the command of Captain Christopher Newport sailed up the James River and uh, anchored off a of grass. All right. Who did that? I said, who did that? Nobody's leaving this classroom until I get a confession. from my automobile. Here it is, the middle of June. 
school's almost out. Oh, it's a shame, all right. Let's go all because play. folks couldn't put up with one little Indian let's, boy. Let's play baseball. I don't need that from you, Doc. Just give me one of those entry forms. Yeah, I thought you'd given up the horses. Well, what with you driving the new machine and all? Let's give go, the rest of us a chance at the 4th of that July car. race. <laughs> let's go get that car. Ooh, I wonder what this guy Times five. Ten. One more length of pipe and we got water. Wonderful. All right, what's this one? Eight. Frankie, we only have a few more. You have plenty of time to sign up for that race. She's right, Frank. You can't do any betting. If you don't know your numbers. <gasps> John, what are you teaching this boy? Horse racing. I'm leaving the school teaching to you. <gasps> All right, you two, go play with the horses. I'll have supper ready when you get back. You know something? You're not a bad person. Now, right here is where the race is won or lost, right here on this mark. And when this rope drops, your horse is going to shoot out of here like greased lightning. Only you're going to hold him back, just enough to keep him in control. Not too much, or else he'll be standing here and the race will be over. July race coming up, or haven't you heard? There's no engine ride in that race. Nothing in the rules against it. Doc Kaminsky signed him right up. You can't be serious. I'm dead serious. You're not thinking about dropping out, are you? My daddy's not afraid of that stallion. Are you, daddy? I tell you what, let's find out what that half-broke Mustang of yours can do. Yeah? What do you mean? I mean right now. He hasn't been trained to race yet. Well, if he's half as fast as you think he is, he shouldn't lose by more than five links. Yeah. So? So I'll wager you a $20 gold piece that he can't come within five links of Count Soros. And if I win, you got to agree that he don't enter that race on the fourth.
on, Cal. What are you so teary-eyed about? A horse doing as well as he did the first time out on the track? He's a winner. We've got some training ahead of us.
Don't you have some liquor anywhere? I think I picked a bad time to quit drinking. Uh, hold on to the bedposts. Frank, there's a an old crutch out in that tool shed. All right. Ah! Ah! Mm. I thought you were supposed to be my good luck charm. <sighs> Mr. Stenslow, what is it? Where's John? Well, he's lying down. He hurt himself trying to fix the windmill. What's wrong? Marcy's bad. The baby's coming. I think it's backwards. I gotta get Doc Kaminsky. Isn't he in town? No, he's out at the Taylors. The Taylors? That's... It's gonna take me over an hour to get him. And... I'm afraid to leave Marcy alone with just Mary there. I'm afraid she's gonna die. All right, all right. Frankie? Here, you tend to John. John, I need to go with Mr. Stenslow. Yeah, I'll be all right. I wish I could help you, Bill. house. Frank, do you know where the Taylors live? It's by the train crossing. That's 16 or 17 miles. Are you sure you still want to do it? I will ride Fury. You know what that can do to your horse? Driving in this rainstorm? Fury can make it. Why would he do that? He ought to hate my guts. must ride tonight, like never before. Let me give you a boost. Be careful. Fury is strong. We'll be all right.
be here before too long. Um. Get up, Fury. Please. Miss Desmond will die. Get up. Please, Fury, get up. Come on, boy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Gotta get him in the barn, dry him off. Come on, boy. Come on. Marcy. Oh, doctor. Marcy, just relax now. Doctor, I can't. Don't do any more pushing. The baby's still all crooked. I'm going to make an incision right here and lift the baby out. There's no cause for worry now. Amelia? Yes. I'm going to need your help. All right. Bill, best you leave. Please. Hand me that blanket, Frankie. I'm going to have to try and get him warm. He's starting to quiver already. Get the other end of it. That's it, good. That's fine. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna get you warm and dry. I will stay with Fury. There's nothing you can do now but wait. First, we're gonna get you and your clothes dry. Come on. boy. And Marcy is going to be just fine.
Frank. Come on. No. I have to stay here with Fury. He's gone, son. There's nothing more we can do for him. No, no. I won't let him die. Howdy, John. How's it going? Fine, fine. How's Marcy and that new boy of yours? Oh, fine. They're doing doing just fine. Where's Frankie? He's out in the barn. <laughs> Exercising this cold, huh? Yeah. Yeah, fine looking cold, isn't he? He should be. How's his mother? Um, she's she's fine. She's doing just fine. <laughs> he's got fine lines. Yeah, yeah, he's got Fury's lines. Hope you're not thinking of gelding him. Oh no. Glad to hear that. I believe it's gonna clear up. I hope so. Hi, Frankie. Hi. Can you come outside for a minute? How come? Just because. Come on. Come on. Come on. My father has a surprise for you. I don't know how to say what I want to say. Maybe someday when you're older, you'll be able to look back on this day and understand what I'm feeling here. Take him, Frankie. He's Fury's flesh and blood. Fury's son. He could never belong to anybody else. <laughs> Fury wouldn't want it any other way. Come on, Frankie, let's take him out into the field. Come on, boy. Come on. John. 
Makes a man feel good to be alive. You sure you won't let me drive you to town? It's over three miles. No. You've done much. I thought I would not see the boy again. Note to Cornell Stewart down at the train depot, and he'll make sure they take good care of his cold on your way back. I'm going to send you some books. I expect you to read them. And yeah, when you get Little Fury trained, I want you to bring him back so we can see him, all right? I'm a sweet to John. Don't let it end here in that hatch. Go out there and be somebody. <laughs> 